Make the most of your holidays by celebrating Christmas at Biltmore. Enjoy a breathtaking tour of America's largest home, filled with shimmering Christmas trees and adorned in all its yuletide glory. Then, don't miss your last chance to experience our immersive digital art exhibit, Italian Renaissance Alive, during its final weeks. Save with online ticket discounts at Biltmore.com. Judy was boring. Hello. Then, Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now, Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The Jurgen's Journal featuring Walter Winchell. Mr. Winchell, whose famous column appears in the New York Daily Mirror, the Havana Cuba... Post Telegram and other newspapers with more than 25 million readers is brought to you by Jergens, the lotion for soft, smooth, romantic hands. Since this is the last Walter Winchell broadcast to be sponsored by the Andrew Jergens Company, the commercials are being eliminated in favor of a farewell to Mr. Winchell, which you'll hear later. So now to the editorial room of the Jergens Journal and Walter Winchell. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North of South America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Scarsdale, New York. Alan E. Norman of the Fawcett Publications was killed today in the fire that swept his Scarsdale home. Mrs. Norman and their ten-year-old son escaped by jumping from their second-story window. Beverly Hills, California. Frederick Ullman, Jr., the former president of Pathé News, died today. New York City. Features Lily, the star, is a lot better at the doctor's hospital in New York. Bronchial pneumonia. She may return to the cast of Inside USA by tomorrow night. Wall Street. Eileen Wenzel, formerly in the Broadway girl shows, will be married this week to Mr. Max Bamberger of the New York Stock Exchange. Hendley, Ohio. Vaughn King, the actress who appeared as Sally Andrews many times on the Jergens program, died yesterday at her home. Cancer. Broadway, New York. Michael Todd, the producer, who lost a million dollars a year ago, is now making a net profit of $11,000 a week with his new hit show, As the Girls Go, at the Winter Garden. Miami Beach, Florida. The Damon Runyon Fund all-star show scheduled at the swanky Roney Plaza Hotel for tonight has been postponed until tomorrow night, same time. Very nasty Yankee weather. New York City. The father of Miriam Lavelle, the star dancer, has passed away. The William Morris Booking Agency cannot locate Miriam to break the unhappy news. Tucson, Arizona. It's a baby girl for the editor and the publisher of Tucson Sun, Arizona's largest weekly newspaper, the big opposition to the Jurgens Journal. Columbus, Georgia. Connie Mead, a very lovely young lady here at ABC, was married to Lieutenant F.B. Popoff. The ABC press department is in deep mourning. Mexico City. The Mexican government presented the Runyon Committee with a ticket on today's Mexican sweepstakes. It was for the horse named Cutsan. The winner, however, was Alaboy. The favorite came in third. Cutsan is still missing. The international cable. Manila. The first Russian demand on any new government in China will be submarine bases and warm water ports. Russian submarines in the China Sea are now as dangerous as Nazi submarines in the North Sea. Submarine communications between the Filipino underground and Moscow have graduated to traffic in arms. Tokyo. Chiang Kai-shek's advisors are now urging him to die at the head of his troops in the field or fight on from Formosa Island. Brussels. The big corporations and the cartels are the real powers behind the struggle for the German rule. One of the big and the most sinister figures is an American. His name is Dan Heinemann, a German name. Shanghai. Orient seaports are full of rumors that old American PT boats are running guns to the communist armies in China at enormous profits for an undercover American syndicate. The Washington ticker. The Herbert Hoover Commission's report to the president will bitterly criticize the intelligence departments, especially the Army's G2. It will have little or no criticism of the FBI. The Washington cocktail rumors say that the president will draft General Eisenhower to replace Mr. Forrestal. The Department of Defense. The defense budget will be the battleground in the next Congress. Not only a Defense Department investigation, but a war contracts inquiry will be demanded. Labor makes Mr. Forrestal labor enemy number one, and Senator Taft labor enemy number two. The White House. 
The State of the Union message by the President will make Wall Street yearn for the good old conservative days of FDR. The U.S. Senate will soon get a bill to abolish the soft jobs of three military consultants to the President of the United States. They include Admiral Leahy, Admiral Foskett, and Major General Harry Vaughn. Mr. and Mrs. United States, a man was killed the other day, either by accident, suicide, or murder, because his name was carelessly injected into the spy hearing. This is something the Un-American Activities Committee will have a hard time explaining to the public. However, Lawrence Duggan has been cleared by the Department of Justice now that he can't hear it. To Mrs. Duggan, I want to debunk the terrible slanders and untruths even better than the government men can do it. Mrs. Duggan, I can prove your husband was no communist. In the September 1946 issue of the Inter-American magazine, now defunct, Mr. Duggan had an article, the title of which was Background for Revolution. In it, Lawrence Duggan spilled the beans on the communist operations in Latin American nations. Lawrence Duggan, you see, ladies and gentlemen, was the State Department's expert on Latin America. Dig up that magazine article, Congressman Nixon, and put it in the congressional record, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I have not yet received any challenge or denial to the following scoop, which I signed with my own name in the New York Mirror this week. I said that a congressman will soon charge the Un-American Activities Committee with refusing to receive evidence. Evidence that six well-known political newspaper columnists carried membership cards in the Communist Party. The six whom the snubbed witness was ready to name enjoy reputations as authorities on the Middle and the Far East. You may take it from there, Congressman Munt. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Grauer for Jergens Lotion. Walter, Mr. Andrew Jergens, president of the Jergens Company, would have liked to say these words to you himself here tonight. But since, like so many of us, he's spending Christmas with his family at home, he's asked me to read his message. Dear Walter, this is the last broadcast of your program that will be sponsored by the Andrew Jergens Company. The association that ends tonight has been a long one, 16 years. 16 years during which millions upon millions of Americans made the Jergens Journal every Sunday night a listening habit. I consider it a tribute to your reporting, Walter, to your alertness for news, and to your forthright straight-from-the-shoulder presentation of that news that your audience has constantly grown in numbers and that your influence has increased with the years. We of the Andrew Jergens Company and I personally want to salute you on this occasion. You are one of the truly great reporters of our time. We hope and we know that you'll have even greater success in the years to come. Signed, Andrew Jergens. So tonight ends one of the longest associations in the history of broadcasting. During all this period, the policy of the Andrew Jergens Company has always been to allow Mr. Winchell the fullest possible freedom to express his own views, whether or not they agreed with him. They were always his own views expressed in his own way. For free, uncensored presentation of the news is one of the great strengths of the American nation and the American system. And the right of every person to freely express his own views is the foundation of our democracy itself. Today, while the rest of the world is swept by clouds of chaos, confusion, and terror, we here in our land still have that right. And a great many other rights, too, that are pretty important. The right to worship as we please the right to choose the work we like and to compete with our skill or our products in the open market, the right to accumulate our money and invest it in new undertakings, the right to reap the rewards of our individual initiatives. These rights are ours because we fought for them and because we treasure them among our most precious possessions. And these rights will remain ours as long as we are united as a nation to preserve them. Yes, only by the unity of our people, capital and labor, farmer and city worker, members of every race and creed and political affiliation working together, can we keep America the strongest, the most prosperous, and the happiest nation in the world. And now back to the editorial room of the Jurgens Journal and Walter Winchell. Thank you very much, Ben. And thank you very, very much, Mr. Jurgens. 
Sixteen years is nearly half of a man's working lifetime. There never was a time during that radio record period, Mr. Jurgens, when I was not proud of my association with you and the Jurgens Company. And, Mr. Jurgens, there never will be. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Jurgens is as American as the Ohio River which flows past his Cincinnati door. He believes in the Benjamin Franklin tradition of free enterprise, and he has proven that it works in the 20th century. Mr. Jurgens also believes in a Jeffersonian free press and free speech, and he has time and again proven his convictions by never interfering with mine. You may appreciate the import of that when I tell you that Mr. Jurgens is a die-hard Republican who never interfered with the political views and opinions of this FDR Democrat. Mr. Jurgens, this is not goodbye. Ours is more than a record-breaking contract. It is a record-breaking handshake. The contract ends tonight, but our handshakes do not. I want to publicly thank you again for all the kind things you repeatedly have said about me as a newspaper man, and to wish you, Mr. Jurgens, a very happy New Year. You certainly made mine very happy for 16 years. Lotions of love, Mr. Jerkins. I am going to miss you very much. The latest clue to the mystery melody. I told you last Sunday night, ladies and gentlemen, that it is to be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Tonight, I can reveal that the mystery title has only four words. You will find three of them together in Matthew, chapter 25. The sixth verse. Remember now, the sixth verse. And try to remember the Runyon Cancer Fund, if you will. And now with a lump in the throat and the heart, for the final edition, after 16 wonderful years for Jurgens, the gem of the lotion. To start, as your New York Kaiser Fraser correspondent, over the same network, same station, same time, next Sunday night. New York time, 9 o'clock. West Coast time, 6 p.m. INF. I don't see how they could have kept this a secret if it is true. But some people, just back from there, tell me that Tyrone Power married Linda Christian November the 6th. Los Angeles Herald Express. The many reports in various places that Jane Russell and football star Bob Waterfield are planning a divorce are not true, I am assured. To the New York Mirror, the Duke and the Duchess of Windsor are reported to have undergone operations for plastic surgery to remove the wrinkles from under their respective orbs. Journal American. The new chief delegate from China to the United Nations, his name is T.F. Chang, and Mrs. Chang arrived in the United States this week. A woman who alleges she has been his wife for 25 years with four children will challenge his Mexican mail-order divorce. To all of you in the 48 states, thanks again for the money you sent with your Christmas cards for the Runyon Cancer Fund. Thanks to all the moving picture, stage, and radio stars who reminded you to do it on their program. Tomorrow night, at the Roney Plaza Hotel in Miami Beach, for the Runyon Committee, I will turn over another $150,000 to the American Cancer Society. And that, ladies and gentlemen, winds up 16 exciting years for the Jurgens Journal until next Sunday night at the very same time. Until then, and with lotions of love, I remain your New York correspondent, Walter Winchell, who wishes all of you in the 48 a happy 49. Good night. This is Hugh James speaking for the Andrew Jurgens Company, who have asked me to express their appreciation and thanks to you, Ben Grower, for the wonderful job you've done for them during the 16 years you've been the announcer for the Jurgens Journal. Thanks, Hugh. I'd like to add just a brief personal word of thanks. Thanks to Andrew Jurgens for giving me the announcing nod through all these years, an assignment that's one of the proudest in our craft. And thanks to you, Walter, for the chance to sit at your right hand for those same 16 years. Remember that first Jurgens Journal, Walter, back in December 1932, right after Marie Chevalier? Both of us pretty scared, at least I was. Radio's grown mightily since then, and you with it. I bet you'll be radio's most popular feature when your opening line goes, Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, from border to border and planet to planet. So long, Walter, and good luck.
Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go, make your dreams come true. The things we do for love. Only at David's Bridal. 